Well, hello there. It is Sandy, and it is the summer of stamping. Ellen Hudson's got four new releases on all the Mondays in July, and I'm going to be sharing each one of them with you. I'm really excited about this one. It's a partnership with Lawn Fawn, and it's called Some More the Merrier. I did this card three times with this stamp set. <laughs> Sometimes it just takes a while. But it's got little critters, it has the little campfire, it's got some wars and all kinds of little accessories to go with it. And I use just this set of colors, believe it or not. That's all the colors that there are in there. And I will be putting that picture over on the blog if you want to see what the colors are. But I thought I'd share a little about how I did the stamping. First, I laid all three stamps down here. I wanted the some more in the little guy's hand. So I stamped the some more, but I wiped off the part where I thought his hand would be. And then I put him in there and put a sticky note over where this, the full some more would be. And that left me with the little paw on the sticky note. So I could trim off the paw, put the sticky note back into place, and then stamp it and his little paw would be in the front. I did have to do a little line work to clean things up myself because my stamping is terrible as always. I always tell you I'm a terrible stamper. But then I started making my background. And what I've, I'm doing is creating a ring around the fire. The fire is going to cascade light out in an oval shape. The back half of the oval will be smaller than the front half of the oval. And I'm just going to use progressively darker colors as I work toward the inside. These are E8s. That's an E89 and an E87, which are both desaturated colors. And then I'm going to switch to saturated colors as I get close to the fire. And saturated means it's going to have more reds in it, more strong colors, rather than being more grayed out. And for right now, it's going to look like it's a rug, like he's on some giant round rug. And that's not what it's going to be like eventually. But this is setting the undertones of what I'm going to do on top of it, because I want to make it look like dirt. So I put a little shadow underneath of where the firewood is and then just blended it slightly. And then comes turning it into a scene. So I made a horizontal line back there so I kind of have something to gauge myself by instead of that weird oval and started making horizontal flick marks with the different colors. I just cycled through them, went through the 8.9 and the 8.7 and the, I think it's a YR27 and a Y23, and just kind of kept going back and forth between them, making horizontal lines, but you can see that under undercoat of the oval still remains. So I still get the feeling that there's something rounded there, that that's where the light came in, but all the stuff on top is making it look like there's more horizontal lines from the dirt. So that is one of the, the ways that you can convey that light. I also wanted to put some water in here because it's World Watercolor Month and this is not watercolor, but I thought it'd be fun to at least pretend there's some, some water in the picture. So I put a little lake in there and I want you to notice how light the lake is going to get in a few minutes. But now I'm going to put the sky in and I wanted really dark, rich sky. So I took a V09 and then a BV17 and just went crazy with just putting colors in here. Not really worrying too much about the blending, getting them blended enough that it wouldn't be too noticeable if it wasn't perfect. And then some B99, just as I started getting down toward that horizon line, and then went in with my black marker so that I could make mountains back here in the background. And the mountains, you can make whatever kind of shapes you want. If you want to make it a desert or a high mountains or whatever kind of campground you like to go camping at, totally fine. You could put trees back there, all different kinds of things. So now I've got this bright lake. Look how bright that lake got all of a sudden because color is relative to whatever is around it. So I put some darker colors, the, the two uh, purples that are in the sky, just so that it would reflect some of that sky color because I wanted it to disappear, but I just wanted it to sort of be there in the distant background. And since I had the purple in my hand, I threw some purple in the foreground too. And then I wanted to have some grasses there. So that made the, the land ending up there in front of the lake. And so it wouldn't be just like a hard edge. And that purple didn't end up being dark enough. So I went in with the black 
and did just some grasses, just flick marks for grasses going up into the lake itself, and then started bringing the colors back downward toward the fire because now I need to almost complete the other side of the circle because I hadn't really done any blending on that side of it. So I worked my way from the black down to browns and then just started adding a little bit more color just to soften some of those edges and tighten in the circle because the tighter it is, the smaller it's gonna feel, the more intimate it'll feel. I put a shadow behind the hedgehog because he's blocking the light from the fire and now it's time to color the hedgehog itself. Now I could have colored the hedgehog and the fire first. Most of us would, but I wanted to color him based on the colors that were in the rest of the picture. I wanted to know how dark to get. So I used the E87 and the YR27 so he would match the dirt and then added some lines in it using the E89. So that gave me kind of him fitting in with the whole scene and using the same yellows and same gold colors and the same brown colors then in the s'more that he's holding. And I have no idea, I can't, I can't even remember, I haven't had a s'more in so long. Does the chocolate go on top of the marshmallow? I think it does, because otherwise you'd have the marshmallow mushing on top. I don't know which one goes on top. So he might be holding his s'more upside down. But if he does, then, you know, tough luck, right? So I made, uh, made each of the pieces of wood have a little highlight on top since they'll be lit by the fire and put a little glowing into the fire itself. And now for this crazy like fire thing, you can make realistic looking fire by using a white pen and while it's wet, use your finger to smoosh it. And I'm just kind of pushing and twisting the lines up there and it's almost better if your pen skips because mine was skipping a little. I was like, oh, that looks kind of cool. And so I started putting just a bunch of different lines coming up from the points of the flames. And then I dried it because I wanted to do something else to it and I didn't want wet ink there. Uh, don't ask me how I know that that will be a problem for you. I went over it with some Y17 and then started uh, working in some of the Y02 just to start pulling some, some highlights in above. Now you have to scribble your pen off, you don't want that acrylic on the nib of your pen but then I added more white on top of it just for the top layer and then I got some yellow along with the white and I used a little bit of Copic um, colorless blender in the sky just scribbled a little bit to make a galaxy and then threw some stars in there. Now this is one of them that I did I colored it, this whole thing several times um, don't ask me how mad I am at my camera for screwing it up, but each time I did a little different. I used different colors. This one I hadn't put the lake into, but I had the little guitar in his hand. And the way that I stamped the guitar was the same way that I did for the uh, some more. I stamped the guitar, wiped off the top of it before I stamped it so it was empty. I put the sticky note over it and then stamped him and then moved the sticky note to the other side so I could stamp the bottom of him. Same way as I did with the some more and decided I needed a little more yellow on his face. But you know, you can see the color difference. I just use different colors. You can use all different kinds of colors. You don't have to use exactly what I used. Try it and see what you've got. This was another attempt when the camera went belly up on me and I had two of them going and I went crazy with my coloring and then they found out later the footage didn't work, but um, one of them is holding the little s'more thing. And again, I blocked off the bottom half, stamped the top of him, um, and then I blocked off the bottom half with stamping the s'more thing first. And then around the outside, I just put, you know, trees and branches and grasses and things. So they're kind of nestled in their little camping spot. So those three were fun. I wish I hadn't had to do it three times to get one set of good footage. But you know, that's how life goes sometime. I also did the same thing in colored pencil. So I'm gonna turn on some music and you can just watch the colored pencil version. This is the one that's gonna go up over on Instagram and I thought I'd share it with you. So let's go and do some colored pencil. <laughs>
I hope you enjoyed that. And if you'd like to check out the links that are on my blog as well as in the doobly doo. And I will see you again with another video in a couple of days. Thanks for hitting that like button. See you later.